We got a great show, guys. We've got an absolute uh, monster on the show. Second team All Pac 12 selection from USC, who led his team in receiving touchdowns just last year. Brendan Rice is joining us. We're getting you guys set with all the draft prospects, all the info you need. Uh, excited to to chop it up with him. Maybe we'll ask about his dad. Actually, like, can I not ask about his dad and just talk about him and how wonderful he is? Also, uh, this is the draft for offensive linemen. Of course, quarterback, 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 blah, blah, blah. We have the O-line guru, Duke Manyweather, on the show. You're going to want to hear what he has to say. Brandon Rice on the show, offensive lineman guru, Duke Manyweather on the program, and... Shams, 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 Shams joining us. He just told me when he's walking out, I said, who's going number two in the draft? And he said, there's so much going on in the NBA. I don't, is there? I don't know. I, I know that my parlay busted uh, with Chandler Parsons yesterday. Do we have said parlay full screen available? Probably not. Should have asked for that. We were so close. We each, we wanted Maxi and Trey Young, 20 points apiece, 20 plus. It was a two-leg parlay. It was boosted on FanDuel Sportsbook. This was, to me, like, okay, it's happening. Chandler knows what he's talking about. He was yelling at me for using math, but it was okay. And we missed by one point. I believe it was Maxi who had 19 points. Am I correct? The group text chain's going crazy. Like, we're we're going to hit this. We're so excited. One point, I believe last week, my parlay with Darius Butler, also we missed on, I think, one point at the buzzer as McCollum was draining three after three after three against the Sacramento Kings. Uh, and now they're facing elimination if they fall to the Lakers. I know a little bit about my hoops. We're going to talk to Shams about that. But FanDuel, my team, Chris, uh, Suze, we got to come up with something for these people who rode along with us because we have been so close two weeks in a row. Next week, we're, I promise you, I'm in it. We're going to figure something out and hopefully uh, get it done. We'll have Shams on in a bit, Brendan Rice joining the show. Uh, but we're officially, it's a week away, guys, a week away from the NFL draft uh, in Detroit. I will not be there in person. I'll be there in spirit coming to you live from a floaty somewhere in Cabo. Will it be a flamingo floaty, a unicorn floaty? I don't know, but we'll uh, get you those picks. And usually at this point, when it's when you're a week out, I don't have to ask Shams. I don't have to text, uh, you know, the Ian Rappaports of the world. What are you hearing? What's going on? When you inch this close, you have a pretty clear picture of what's probably going to happen. I really do feel like this year, nobody really knows how it's going to shake out after the number one overall pick, which seems to be, and everyone would be shocked if it wasn't Caleb Williams. But as far as I'm concerned, I genuinely think that we're going to see four quarterbacks taken within the top four picks for the very first time in NFL history. It's never happened, people. Commanders, they just did something weird. They hosted every top quarterback pop prospect. They said Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, Michael Penix. Why don't you guys all roll up to the facility Tuesday around the same time uh, and, and hang out? Why are we doing this bachelor style, like who gets the rose, who gets the date, who's going to the fantasy suite, who's advancing? It's an interesting approach to have. It's like a, a dating game to have everybody there. Is it a way to see... The players interact. Do you want to, you know, it's this new wave of thinking, of course, with the, the new leadership uh, and the new wave of what's going on with the commanders. I'm obsessed with it. Why do it this way? Why haven't we always done it this way? Isn't this not more efficient? You get your time. You get to, you know, it's a controlled situation where the front office and the decision makers are all feeling the same way on that specific day. So it's like an experiment. I don't know why, why more people don't do this or why we haven't done this um, all along. But that was sort of an interesting little wrinkle uh, and we'll see who they take you guys know who I said should go Jaden Daniels if you're if you're sitting there uh, and you're Peters and company and it's who do, who do I want I want the highest ceiling I want the most dominant player available and that would be Jaden I think out of that lot um, okay the Patriots they're either going to take you know a quarterback or they're going to trade down with somebody else who needs one so I think you're going to get a quarterback taken there at that spot Elliot Wolf said this morning they're not shutting anything down. They're not closing the door to anything. And then the Cardinals are, they're the wild card right here at four. Can we make history here, Cardinals? And I think everybody expects the Vikings to make a move for that pick. But the Broncos, what are they doing at quarterback? They've got to be interested, too. The Raiders could come into play. Do the Giants make a move? Listen, if I'm Monty and these Cardinals, I'm loving my life right now. I'm in Cabo with a, with a mojito um, and hanging out at the pool because I would do everything I can to play these teams off of each other and drive up the price, okay? You could land yourself a record haul for that four, number four pick. 
And you can add strength, bolster your org big time, like the Dolphins did. What did they do? They made a trade with the Niners a few years back, and look how that worked out. So the temptation has to be all-time high. I'm not, I mean, I can't even imagine being these dudes drinking their Mountain Dews and Diet Cokes and Red Bulls and these crazy war rooms that they have set up. But the temptation has to be all-time high to snag Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors. You know, you want to give Kyler Murray that number one receiver. He's going to need to be successful, even though he had an DeAndre Hopkins. Let's not go there. I would love that for Kyler to have that. Um, and he obviously, raw talent-wise, surpasses almost everybody. But the more I've thought about it, this receiver class is too deep, right? This team is, isn't is one player away. They did have D-Hop, and it didn't work out. I think you kind of have to make a move down if you're Arizona. The Vikings, are they're in a pretty desperate spot. Use that to your advantage. Start a bidding war. Set yourselves up for the long haul and, and for a big haul. And if the Giants' rumblings are actually legit, you can make a smaller move down to six. You can pick up an extra first and still get one of the top two receivers. So the way that my eyes are on Monty, like, Fully, okay, the way he handles this situation in year two as GM is going to define this Cardinals team and the other teams that were in line to get quarterbacks for years to come. Uh, and he's going to be what we think about when we figure out who's going to the Hall of Fame and who won over won championships and who ended the Chiefs dynasty and all of that. Truly um, excited to see what happens there. Other stuff going on um, beyond the draft. OTAs, guys, they're underway. People are showing up. They're doing their stuff. They're kumbayas. They're trust falls. A um, bunch of Eagles players yesterday talking about what's already been an action-packed offseason in Philly. All eyes are going to be on offense, of course, especially after whatever the heck happened. Shams, what happened to the Eagles down the stretch last year? Can you find that on your phone? Eh, maybe. Maybe. Okay, the Eagles. Do I, we, nobody will ever know what happens until, like, Omaha Productions makes a docuseries about it in 10 years, okay? Um, but, but what are they going to do? New OC, Kellen Moore. They lose Jason Kelsey. Huge pivotal piece. How, how do you fill that hole? Um, and then they add Saquon. That should be a nice way to sort of, you know, flex seal and patch that a little bit of that up. Um, Jalen Hurts talked about the new offense and his experience with the new look so far. You know, I think the thing that um, we all have to understand is the importance of a foundation in something. And so uh, I want the co coaches to, you know, declare their foundation in terms of what they want something to be, how they want it to look. And then obviously you're going to you're going to adjust from there. Um, I think when that um, foundation isn't as strong as you want it to be, you know, it may not, you know, last as long or uh, be as good in the end. And so um, that's something that we don't want to happen. So that word foundation, if you watch it, it came up a lot. And he said just right there, when the foundation isn't as strong as you want it to be, it may not last as long. I don't think I'm reading too much into that to think that Jalen's referring to what happened to the offense as the season went on last year. I mean, we talked about it. This team seemed to lose who they were, their identity. The mirror got foggy on them. Who am I? They went from the third highest scoring offense in the league through 11 to 24th over their last seven. They scored 10 fewer points per game to close out the year. It was a mess. And hearing Jalen there and thinking more about the situation, you know, made me think about this moment from right before the Super Bowl. I had the Eagles $25 million receiving duo on the program. Take a look. Uh, and remind yourselves of how this went. Okay, if you could have one wish and say, Kellen Moore, this is what I need for next season, this is what I want you to bring into this locker room, bring to this offense, what would that be? Um, just, just let us do what we do. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, like anybody else, <laughs> saying, just, just give us the ball. Okay, so those faces said it all. It was an awkward interview. It really was. It was a, probably my most awkward interview that I've done since starting the show. I, I couldn't quite get what they were saying. I didn't want to put them in a bad spot. I didn't know where I could push. I wouldn't know what they, but their faces said everything, right? It, and what they said even, uh, it becomes clear. Offensive structure, it's play calling. That was the issue for those two, for these players. And it remains to be seen what it's going to look like with Kellen Moore, who we were all hyping up last year and he didn't get it done with the Chargers. What we do know is that the Eagles do have the most expensive trio of playmakers in the league, AJ, Devonte, and Saquon. They combined for 62 and a half mil this year. So this is an OC's dream to have that kind of talent, but also a nightmare if you don't get it done. And if you have an issue with mouths to feed, with pressure that comes along with that, you've got to perform. And if all of this doesn't put enough pressure on the coaching staff, did you guys see the ESPN article on Belichick yesterday? 
Uh, the Cowboys, the Giants, and the Eagles are the three most likely landing spots for Bill Belichick next season. Yeesh. So pressure. Lots of reasons to be excited about 2024 Eagles. And I can see the bounce back. I hope it for them. But make or break situation in Philadelphia. Okay, we're going to take a short break here. We're going to get Brendan Rice on the program. Jerry Rice's son, the Hall of Famer son. We'll get to all of that. Um, but I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know about Penn State edge rusher Chop Robinson. You'll be delighted by that. And Shams stopping by the show. Un unexpected and unannounced. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to figure something out, Hamilton. Um for next week. Some sort of. One point is crazy. Yeah. We needed three points with like a minute to go. I know. Group text and he got he hit a couple chain. free throws. He hit a he hit a couple free throws with like 10 seconds left to get him to 19. And you're just hoping that he gets the ball back and gets fouled again at that point. I wrong. wanted my Friday. I wanted my Thursday Friday champagne. I wanted it. Like I thought. I thought it was gonna happen. I know. What? But you know what? It's it, it's really it's on, it's on Chandler Parsons at this point. Trey Young did his job. You know. Can I also tell you? <laughs> can I also tell you that last week it was not on me. Yeah. Whose legs didn't work? My my column was sinking threes. <laughs> you were on vacation. Okay. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I forget who else I had. Oh, it was Saboner. Yeah. <laughs> Sabonis. Couldn't get it done. Uh, and that was not my pick. Yeah. That was the pick of one. Uh, what's his uh, name? Yeah, All right, here we go. Oh, my gosh. You've got, look at this, like, uh, look at this Shams situation. You've got people escorting you Matt, in. Matt, how are you? Wow. What's up, Shams? How's everything, bro? You doing all right? <laughs> Good. How are you doing? Good. K with the white on white. Yeah. I'm like a, I'm, little do you mean to see there's like a big bleach stain somewhere on these pants. Sorry, no one, no, 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 no one, no one, no one cares noticed. about the pants. Fine. Everyone just cares about you, Shams. Shams oh, and your hair. Sorry. Guys, Shams is here if you have any questions. Maybe we should tweet that. Let's see how that goes for me. <laughs> any other question for Shams? Um, what do you want to talk about? It's a lot going on. What's what, a, what do you want to talk about? This is... Tell me the biggest thing that's going on. <clears throat> um, I mean, the NBA playoffs, for sure, is the biggest what, thing. What's the big storyline? Um, Golden State, they're done. Golden State, um, Miami. Miami being without Jimmy Butler. Okay. Um, Giannis, also out. Um, those, are, those are the few. Why is Giannis out? He has a calf strain. What's his... Like, what is he right now? Like, what is his legacy? Persona? What's his legacy? Like, what's his, where is he at? His legacy is he's trying to win one more championship. He won right. one, which put, put him in a position of, like, he might be, you know, one of the top 20, 30 greatest players ever. Mm -hmm. But he's trying to get into that top 10, you know? If you're, if you're honest, need, you need more rings. You need more championships. What is, like, in the NFL, having two rings puts you in the, in the really good club? Is, two, is it two for I mean, the NBA? Once you get multiple, I mean, Giannis is so, you know, he's... Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Uh, Penn State edge rusher Chop Robinson. Got to tell you guys about him. The draft's a week away. One thing about him is that he might have the highest ceiling of any prospect in this draft. Hear me out. You're busy doing your stuff. You're living your life. You're, like, ordering a million dollars off Amazon. You're unpacking boxes. Your taxes are late. You need to know about these guys. I'm going to tell you in short order what you need to know about these draft prospects that are going to make an immediate impact on your team. Chop, by the way, shortened from the name Pork Chop, a nice nickname that he was given at birth somehow. I don't know. Um, he put up a combine performance uh, for the ages. You're looking at his 40 here. A beautiful 448. I repeat a 448. This is a pass rusher, people. This is a big boy eating quarterbacks for breakfast. Are you kidding me? And that wasn't just the best time among pass rushers. That is the exact 40 time as Christian McCaffrey ran. That is, that is ridiculous. I could end there. Need I go on? Uh, sure, I will. He also put up a 10-foot, 8-inch broad. The best of any player that was at least 250 pounds. That's insane. So the athleticism, ch -ch check. Now, we haven't seen Chop put up big numbers on the field yet. Underline yet, highlight it, whatever. He's had nine and a half sacks over the last two years. That doesn't mean it won't come at the next level. Uh, Gary, anybody? Packers, anyone? Bueller? Bueller? He had nine sacks over his final two years at Michigan. He matched that number this year alone with the Packers. So with the profile he has, those numbers I just gave you, 
NFL coaches, they're, they're, they're salivating. They're drooling over getting their hands on the pork chop, okay, and turning him into the next star edge. He's projected as a mid to late first round pick right now. He's got links to the Niners, a lot of NFC West love here, the Rams, the Lions, and a chance to make a big impact for one of those playoff teams looking to make a, a, a jump. And I'm going to say, we're going to cut this off, and this is one of those that I'm going to run it back and play in a year if he goes and helps the Niners back to a Super Bowl, make some game-changing play. He's got that sort of potential in him, and you need to know that. Okay, speaking of run it back, what a segue. What a pro I am. Sham Sharania is here, co-host. Run it back. Run it back on FanDuel TV. You got me twice when you said pork chop and when you said run it back. So I was sold everything you said. Pork chop sort of freaks me out. Any sort of, a, any just sort of a nickname like that. What's the best NBA nickname right now? The best NBA nickname. Putting you on the spot. We have no script. We have nothing. We're yeah, just going. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's great that you, that you did that. <laughs> Is um, there a good nickname? The best nickname. Uh, give, me, give me some time. Um, give you me... guys hit us up with the best NBA nickname. Maybe they don't have them. What? Yeah, we... What did you say? We, we, we had Paul Reed today on. His nickname is B-Ball Paul. What a nickname, right? He plays B-ball basketball. Paul's B-Ball good. Paul. Chandler... Every time he plays, he trends. Does Chandler have a nickname? Uh, when he played CP, I mean, mm. people called him CP, but that's that's just his initials. Playoff Jimmy. Okay. Is is I think you you have to love that nickname. Spider Mitchell. Playoff Jimmy is Jimmy th- Butler. Jimmy Butler, yes. He's yes. undergoing surgery. You reported. I did no? not say surgery. No, <laughs> what is he no, getting? No. What uh, is this he, deal? He's just going to be out multiple he's, okay, weeks. Okay. Sorry. We will correct that. I, I looked okay. at your timeline MCL in injury. the break. MCL injury. MCL no injury. surgery. No, no surgery. surgery for a playoff Jimmy. Okay, very cool. What do I need to know about what's going on in the playoffs right now? You're saying that there's so much NBA news. Yeah, play in tournament tomorrow. Okay. You have Sacramento, New Orleans, and that's a big game. Sacramento beat Golden State at home to get potentially a chance um, to move into the eighth seed in the Western Conference. And they're going to play at home against the – oh, they're going to play in New Orleans. Okay. And New Orleans is really – they just lost Zion Williamson for at least the next two weeks. Um, that's a that's a, obviously devastating for them. Zion Williamson had 40 points. I feel like he was points. just feeling himself. He was like on a he had the mojo. His post points, games were good. 11 rebounds, five assists, and, and arguably, to me, it was the best performance of his NBA career to have that game against the Lakers on that stage. That was probably the closest thing to playoff basketball that he's had. So that game tomorrow, and then another game is Miami hosting Chicago. I don't know if you're. You've got any Bulls loyalty still, but I don't know. I guess um, I no Jimmy Butler yesterday. No Jimmy Butler, so no playoff Jimmy, no not playoff surgery. Jimmy. Got it. For the second straight year, the Bulls will play in Miami for the chance to clinch a playoff seed. Last year, they lost in Miami. They got bounced in the play-in tournament. Miami ends up getting the eighth seed. Miami ends up going all the way to the finals, upsetting the number one seed. So uh, this year, the Bulls, I assume, will want revenge. They will want revenge. Are they a great team? I don't even know. Well, the Bulls have been up and down this year, hovering around 500. Lost Zach Levine for the year, playing without Lonzo Ball. So they're a team that's that's obviously trying to figure it out. But then there's a lot of other stuff going on too, you know, throughout basket th- throughout the basketball community. Okay, talk to me about Caitlin Clark. So you broke this news yesterday; it was absolutely huge. WNBA fever has taken over everything. She's with the fever, of course. And just I, I don't want to get it wrong; it's nearing an eight figure endorsement deal with Nike. She's getting a signature shoe. What else can you add to the story? You hit on all the big points right there, like you always do. And now I'm going to dig. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so she met with three finalists. Under Armour, Stephen Curry was part of that pitch meeting. I'm told the oh. plan in that scenario would have been her, for her to be a part of Under Armour and Curry brand and, and possibly wear Curry brand. So Curry brand is basically a standalone, kind of like what Jordan mm-hmm. brand is for Nike for Stephen Curry. Smart by the Curry team, sure. And so Steph Curry actually FaceTimed into the meeting Talk to Caitlin Clark. Talk to her parents. You got to show up in person, Steph. Like, that. well, he's also got a season. The, yeah. Seal the deal. Okay, There's got a lot it. going on. Got it. But and I think Caitlin Clark, Stephen Curry, we. This is not the end for them. I think they're they might be participating in some shootouts down the line. Oh, fun. In the All Star Weekend, so we'll see about that. Adidas was another uh, company that met with her, but Nike came over the top. Like you said, eight figure deal. I'm told it's eight figures. I said it on running back. I, I'm not a math major. That's $10 million at the least. I'm told it's well beyond $10 million. It's, it's, okay, but eight figures, there's a big gap there. There's a big tax. There's like 19 tax brackets in uh, to eight figures. For so sure. So we talking... I, I, I think it's it, it's fair to say that it's above $20 million. Now, how above is, you know, we'll, we'll see once we get the final numbers. Shout and out I'm to not our team. To, I'm not one to speculate. Yeah, shout out to our team. 
Think about her business portfolio. Obviously, a lot has been made recently about WNBA salaries. Mm -hmm. But I will say her, her business portfolio off the court, she is making significant money off the court. And, you know, to get a signature shoe before you ever step foot on the pro level, that's a big, big deal. How, do we know how long the deal is? Uh, the, it's a multi-year deal, so it's going to be at least four or five years. But she she had been with Nike for NIO, and and so there was already a familiarity there. She wore Nike at Iowa. Uh, she's been wearing Nike really all week at all these different things that she's been doing. So um, and Prada, and Prada. Do you have any news to break about Prada? I have nothing on that. <laughs> do you? I, I don't. When you say it's a big deal, I don't work in the world of endorsements and and, and the NIL and all of that. What does it mean for the NBA in this moment right now? Yeah, I mean, you have a player in the WNBA that, I mean, we saw through the ratings of these games. I mean, this is on par, if not surpassing some of these NBA games. I mean, that's just the reality of it. And that's a kudos to the talent. That's a kudos to the, to the women. That's a kudos to what they've done. And, and for sure, they deserve it. Let's see how this continues to grow the game. The hope is that it continues to grow the game. Lou Williams said on the show today, like, you need to go to a WNBA game. You need to go go to more WNBA games. So hopefully, run it back goes to w, WNBA games. Are you going to be the insider for WNBA now? Since you I broke mean, this there's news? been there's been a there's been a couple this week. Angel Reese, yeah, um, getting drafted to Chicago Sky. Now there's some Chicago oh, ties there. Oh, interesting. Okay. The Chicago streets were talking to me that day. But are you night. passionate about it? Like it's it's it's. I mean, quite I a think, moment. I mean, for sure. I mean, basketball is basketball. But I think now more than ever, what you're starting to see is the WNBA kind of like the NBA is a star-driven league, right? We talk about players, we talk about mm -hmm. individuals. WNBA is starting to have that same similar feel. When you think about Angel Reese, when you think about a Caitlin Clark, you think about these these great, amazing individual players. Now, how does that translate for the growth of the game? Um, we'll see. That's the WNBA's challenge. 20 plus mil on this deal. Congrats, Caitlin Clark. Unbelievable. Other endorsements coming. Got to, you know, address the, the salary in a bit, but she, I, I have no doubt she will make sure of that uh, when she hits the court for the first time. These are the players, the though, that I think can, can have Change that, that conversation. Game. Change the that game. can progress the game and push the game forward. I mean, what Angel Reese is doing also for the sky, like how, 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 really she embraces herself as an individual and is able to speak and is able to have her opinion mm -hmm. and is able to, like, in a very, very, I think, re respectful way, the way she speaks. Like, if you really watch her speak and the way she, I think her tone is. So, I, listen, I think these are, the, these are the group of women that are going to be able to potentially push this game. What do you know about the NFL draft? Who's going, who's hey, going hey, at two hey, to hey, the hey, commanders? You put me on the spot. Who's Give going at two to the commanders? Give me some time. Everything takes You've time. You've just been too busy. All good things take time. Right now, NBA playoffs, a couple couple days away. Okay. So Caleb, Chicago, when's you the, have When's the NFL draft? Next Thursday, as you well know. Next Thursday. In Detroit. All right. I think four quarterbacks are going It's before the, the Kentucky four. Derby? It's, yeah. Wow. Are you going to the Derby? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we got to get Chomps to the Derby, obviously. But, but, but hopefully hopefully next week. Hopefully next week. What else do we need to know NBA-wise? And there's a question in here my producer just put mm. in about um, Steph pulling a Tom Brady and joining forces with a young team somewhere else at some point soon. He's got two years left on his deal, doesn't he? Steph Curry is not someone that I think is going to be jumping ship. I think Steph Curry, from everything I've been told, he wants to be a warrior for life. I, I just... No one can ever envision a scenario where, where Stephen Curry is not a warrior. But listen, they've got a lot of decisions to make. I know you had Chandler on yesterday. He spoke to about it a little bit. He ended, he ended the team. He ended the Yeah, run. I don't know if we can just end it. But he retired them. They're in the rafters. Stephen Curry's still going to be there. Draymond Green, barring anything crazy, he's still under contract for three more years. I, I think Clay Thompson is the big one. Clay Thompson yesterday did his press conference. I think he was agitated about the conversations about his future. But nowhere in his press conference did he say, I want to be 100% back mm. with the Warriors. He is going to be pursuing free agency. He's going to see what else is on the marketplace. And when you're in that frame of mind where all you're thinking about is what else could be out there, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting summer. Okay. I think it's a lot on his mind. And if he does get to the point where he's going to leave, that's going to be the hardest call of his life. Several hard calls. Several hard calls. I mean, imagine, imagine being with Stephen Curry and Jeremiah Green for like 11 years. Yeah. You guys are supposed to retire as warriors. And you possibly leave. But I mean, you're supposed to. But I mean, in the NFL, like it never ends up that way. Yeah. Like, Aaron Rodgers doesn't retire a Packer. For like, sure. Tom Brady does. Like, well, that's a whole other Cinderella beautiful story. Like, we. We'll I will see. say, even in like San Antonio, like, you're so not really in control. But in, in the NBA, 
LeBron's going to play as long, you know, LeBron can be 90 out there, and if he wants to be out there, it looks like he'll be out there, right? Like, it's sort of, it's a little different in that way, it seems. Yeah, like. so for once, my phone's not buzzing, so you're, 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 okay. you're popping today. It's somebody um, asking me about Shams. Literally, uh, I'm at a dinner, <laughs> I'm at a dinner last night, and like, Shams, come, you come up in every conversation I've had in the last month. Anyway, continue, finish your sentence. Now I'm inquisitive, now yeah. I want to know. But, um, what, what I will say, like, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, mm -hmm. uh, Tim Duncan finished his career with the Spurs. One team, one legacy. Dirk Nowitzki did the same thing. Kobe Bryant obviously did the same thing. And you have that nostalgia as a fan that you want to see that happen. The organization wants to see that happen. But Tony Parker left the Spurs. He went to go play for the Charlotte Hornets to finish his career. Mm -hmm. Mono Ginobili retired his Spurs. So, like, Please keep talking about some of those these, are names I'm more familiar with. So, some, like... some, some of these are, are, are left incomplete. Yeah. You get to, like, the finish line. Mm -hmm. And right at the finish line, someone cuts bait. And last year with the Warriors, we saw it. Bob Myers left. Now he's working in TV. Now he's with, with the Commanders. He left that life with the Warriors. Could Clay Thompson be next? We'll see. But but there's there's plenty of topics. I think Kay, like this 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 playoff. Yeah. It, it's it's so much parity. I mean, you think about these matchups. Of course, Boston's going to be favored in whatever matchup. They were head and shoulders above yeah. any team in the Eastern Conference this year. Which you one's know, the most dramatic? Which series am I am I? You want me to watch? Well, I think Lakers, Denver, okay, Lakers, is Denver. always going to be spicy. There was a Shout lot of trash Stan talk Kroenke. last year. Shout out Stan Kroenke. Uh, Josh Kroenke. Like that. Yeah, well, give everyone shout outs. Josh Kroenke, shout out Mizzou. Shout out Mizzou. Josh Kroenke used to that. come pony up at my bar, Willie's Pub and Pool, at Mizzou in Columbia. Shout out Whitney Young. <laughs> shout out New Trier. Okay, we'll be back. Go. <laughs> we got to take a break. Shams is here. Uh, we're going to have Brendan Rice on the program. You got to break. Are you going to be leaking stuff this week on the NFL draft? I, I don't know. If you're if you're gonna reach out to me to tip me off, are you gonna tip me off? I don't off? have any information. I just you know use math and charts and graphs and stuff. All right, we'll be back. Um, you gotta get on that. You gotta get on the agenda. It's always late. So you do? Are you working on something? I just said it's always like, late. No, do you feel like this year's different? Like your vibe of the NFL draft? Honestly, when I first started, you're on yeah. camera still, but yeah. So when I first started doing it mm -hmm. um, in 2020. It was NBA hiatus, so I was literally oh, bored. Oh, got it, got it, got it. I didn't have much to do at all. My life was, still is, boring. So now yeah. it's, your life's not boring. Um, no, but I was at, um, I, was, I was at a, a dinner last night with, with you know, people well above where I should have been, you know, like people who are up Stop here. You're, you're no, but I'm not kidding. The notice. Caitlin thing, you know, everyone just looked at their, and it took over the entire Oh wow! Caitlin Clark took over the entire like the Nike news. Yeah, just all of that just took just became the conversation. It's just such a nice wow. thing to see. Yeah, I mean, it's a really big deal. Yeah, you don't see that ever. So that was that's all it was. What? No, it was something <laughs> you, I always ask oh, about you. What are you doing now? I'm going back. I've, You're gonna go call the commanders. Should I? I'm gonna go call. I don't even know. Whoever you want me to call, I'll call. <laughs> okay, thanks, Shams. I'll make any call. You're the best. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate you. That was an unplanned visit, Shams. I didn't even, I didn't I know, quite know what was going on. You, you, you carried me on that. I appreciate that. You're I couldn't welcome. even tell you the matchups. Bye, Shams. Bye. Love ya. Okay, he's, he's great, 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 great. Brendan, Brendan. Are we getting that um, 20 out right away? Stephen Curry was part of that pitch and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. talk to her parents. You gotta show up in person. There's a big tag group. Not one to speculate. The pro level, that's a big, big deal. Obviously a lot of level, that's a, and, and so, you know, to get a signature shoe, Richard, can we get the money part of that out? That's a big, big deal. I don't. S if it's out, it's not out. It's not out the right way. It's not framed right. Thanks for doing that. It's not. That's not the vibe. Sham, sham, sham. Very cool of him to come on like are we, that. Are we going to actually <gasps> celebrate our birthdays or what? What do you mean? Let me get up and say hi. I have 20 seconds. Get out of here. Right, good. <laughs> I have to get up. I have to get up. Bye, honey. Sorry, Richard. Who stood right, up? Oh. Thank you. Yeah, well, maybe if this place wasn't made out of paper mache. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Hey, everybody, my next guest might be the son of a Hall of Famer, but he's making his own name, turning heads in his uh, draft journey. His draft stock is going up. It's shooting up to the sky, everybody. A second team, all Pac-12 selection from USC, who led the team in receiving touchdowns last year, number two on the field, number one in our hearts, I hear. Brendan Rice, how are you? Good morning. I'm well, how are you? I'm so good. How you feeling? How you living? What's your day like? Uh, I'm just happy. It's another day. Get to go out there and be just dominant. Uh, got a couple workouts, a couple interviews going through. So, you know, take it step by step. Yeah, what'd you dominate today, Rice? Uh, I woke up this morning, made my bed. If you can go ahead and make your bed every morning, amen. <laughs> I did not make my bed this morning, so you are ahead of me. I cannot believe we're a week away from the draft. Finally, Brendan, a week away. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, this draft has been a roller coaster up and down. So many things to attend. Um, and then you got interviews, and you have to really apply yourself each and every day, like when going up to these coaches so they can get to know you. It's pivotal, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, is there a draft day sweater in your closet waiting to make an appearance? Because let's look at these. What what, what do you got? Ooh, a draft day sweater. Uh, I'm going to have something cooking up in my closet for sure, but I don't know if it's going to be a draft day sweater. This is a, a good look. Of course, Detroit cold. A lot of NFL cities are uh, frigid, so you'll get good use out of your uh, wardrobe there, which we love. But um, let's get to some football here. You have this insane season, breakout, four touchdowns your junior year at USC, 12 touchdowns your senior year. You led the team. What happened? What was the moment? What was the biggest reason for the jump in production in your eyes? I took it upon myself and with Caleb as well, just to build that chemistry. Our first year, we were kind of bunched up together. We had a whole lot of transfer players. So I never really got to know, like, know my actual quarterback. Uh, throughout that offseason of the second year, me and Caleb ended up taking that next step, putting in the work each and every day, and really just hanging out more. So once that connection really built, it was about just going out on the field and making it happen. Your connection with Caleb, undeniable. Part of that, you shout him out in that answer right there. What's he made of? What do you want me to know about Caleb Williams? That dude right there, man, he got some real cojones. Okay. <laughs> I would have to say, uh, he he takes it to the next level. Um, just who he is as a character aspect to his teammates. And each and every day, he's going to put in the necessary work just to make himself better and make those around him better. He's going to apply pressure to you and ask you to do certain things so you can take that next level, that next jump. And some guys fall. Some guys are going to rise to the equation. And he sets the standard so high for others as well as himself that you want to be better for him. Mm. What are you going to miss most about him? Uh, you know, just uh, seeing a play break down and him climbing out that po uh, that pocket and me having to go find, uh, you know, like our uh, scramble rules and our dynamic and making sure I get open so he can just chuck it down to me six yards downfield. <laughs> yeah. How did you make Caleb a better quarterback? I would have to say I stayed attentive at all times. So if I was, we're going to go back to the scramble rules. Like if I was to see our sound field and I saw him like in the indications that he's about to roll out, uh, I would just go ahead and react to it a little mm -hmm. bit quicker. So I would just get open, uh, make his life a little bit easier. And that's how I was able to go ahead and take the next leap for touchdowns at least. When you see the things that are sort of uh, said about him that are great, like just what, what does it make you feel when you see anything that's out there that doesn't link up or sort of sync up with what you know of this person and this player? Just the character aspect. Um, people are going to say a couple things here and there. And, you know, this is, this is a world that people don't like little things that he does, but... He's going to carry his head strong. So every single day, I believe that he will still be who he is. He's going to stay true to that, and he's going to stay true to his teammates. I love to hear that. Now, you have this, you're helpful to him. You're going to be helpful to whoever your quarterback is in the <laughs> NFL because you've got this big play potential. A 30 year touchdowns in college went for 30 or more yards. A third, 33%. Mm -hmm. Four of those were 60 plus yarders. I like to hear that. You averaged 17.6 yards per reception last season. What is the key, the code, the cheek, whatever you want to call it? What is the answer to getting behind these DBs so consistently? 
just a lot of film work, uh, a lot of studying with coach, uh, going over the game plan, learning what their coverages are, and taking that game to the aspect. You go ahead and slow down that game, then shoot, you can go ahead and just destroy defenses and really realize the details, the nuances of what it takes to get behind all those DBs to go ahead and find those little holes within the defense. Mm. You pride yourself on work ethic. You're talking film, the whole thing. You have a tattoo that says success is not inherited. It's mm -hmm. earned. Uh, is that your superpower? And if not, what is? is? Is work ethic what makes you as good as you are? Or what are we missing? Work ethic is just it's the foundation. Uh, it's what my dad prided himself on, and it's what I took upon myself because if you, you can't go in this uh, league without work ethic. If you want to play 10, 20 years, which is unheard of, you got to go ahead and beat out the you have to beat out the odds as is. So work ethic each and every day, taking care of your body, making sure you're in that film room, and just being attentive to your coaches, making sure that you take down the details each and every day. Um, I wasn't going to ask. I thought about not asking about your dad because I feel like every interview is asking about your dad, but you, but you brought him up. So is that fair game? Can I ask about him? It's fair game. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's your relationship with that? I'm sure, I mean, it helped. it's an advantage. I mean, even, even in the work ethic way, the getting prepared for this draft process your way, uh, it's an advantage. Is there, is there a, not a, I don't want to say disadvantage, but like what's the biggest challenge of having Jerry Rice be your dad? in this process? Uh, I would say there is really no challenge. Uh, people are going to say, oh, you feel the pressure and, and this and that, but like pressure is a privilege. You have to be here and be in the moment and be thankful to have a last name such as Rice. Just somebody who was so uh, just positive to his community, never really got in trouble. And he was always just praise, uh, getting praise and uh, just promoted how his work ethic and being humble and all these little things that you really want to see in a role model. Um, I love to hear that. You talk about his influence on you a lot. I listened to a lot of interviews, so did my producer, Tierra, and how eloquently you speak about that relationship, how he drives you. But we were curious, what is something that you school your dad on? Like, what's something uh, you influence him on? Influence him on? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good question. I would have to say, man, I... I really, it's really hard to go ahead and teach that man uh, <laughs> anything. Music, TikTok, technology, sweaters, what, anything, anything you were like, dad, you gotta, you, let me get this right. Oh my goodness, I would have to definitely say like the way he takes pictures on Instagram. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait, what do you mean I'm gonna look? His Instagram? His Instagram, like the way he takes pictures or the way he types in go to emoji, go to emoji, go to emoji. I'm like, Pops, we know you need to go, but you don't have to do that every single time. You think like, he's doing too much? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> How many, what does he say when you say, Dad, maybe not seven go to emojis, maybe just three? What does he say? He's like, Man, good morning, goat. Anything. Anything, literally, yes. <laughs> Talk to me. What do you want to say? Dad, Dad, this is how I feel about your photos. Man, he's always open. If you guys can see the 7-Eleven chain, always open. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like, Pops, yeah. why, are you, why are you taking that picture, man? Like, and posting that. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. Oh. This is my favorite interview ever. This is absolutely amazing. How many goat emojis? What What would be if in your ideal world? Does he use like one a picture, one a week? Are we Are we getting rid of the goat emoji entirely? Oh, so every conversation that he texts me like, good morning, goat, or what's up, goat? How you doing, goat? And I'm like, and it'll be goat emoji, goat emoji, goat emoji, and then fire, fire, fire. And I'm like, There's a phrase, it's called smoke him if you got him. And like, he's the goat, what do you want him to do? Shoot. Um, who's the coolest person you've gotten to meet because of your dad? Just being like, who's the person whose presence you're, that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just met that person. Or does it just not bother you at all? Uh, it's become pretty normal, actually. I would not say like anybody's like in particular. Like no, like have you met Tom Brady? Like that doesn't do anything for you. Okay, okay. If I met Tom Brady, that'd be different. Oh, you haven't <laughs> I have met not him. Met, no. Okay, I'd like to see that happen. Your dad oh, I'm gets. Sorry. Your, your, Excuse me, Joe Montana. Oh, that's a good. You know, I'd no, say that was a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Um, when we talk about goats, though, I think we gotta talk about your mom, Jackie. Okay. October ever, October 19th, 2019, you post this photo on Instagram. The caption is, a couple of years, a mama going to be set for life. 
Can you believe you're a week away from, I mean, this was five years ago that you're posting this, and here it is. Let's, let's give your mom some love. Most definitely. That's a strong woman, man, and just the strength that she imposed on me. It's taken me a ways afar. She had a whole impact on me, a, work, a great positive figure within my life, a great role model. And shoot, I've seen her power through so much adversity and just come out the fire even stronger. We'd love to hear that. Uh, and shout out to your mom, Jackie. And like, you are a week away and it's his absolute dream. It's amazing that it's worked out for the, for you. And I can't wait to see where you go. And as you said, success not inherited, it's earned. So we can talk about everybody else all we want, Caleb, your parents, everything. But like, you put in the work and you did that. And I think any NFL team uh, will be lucky to have you. Now you have had some visits. Jim Harbaugh, what was that like? <laughs> He's crazy. What was, that, what was that interview with Jim like? Were you in oh, the Jim. RV, Brendan? Oh, no, I was not in the RV. But I've met Jim Harbaugh a couple times before. So, like, I already know this type of, uh, his type of energy and uh, what he brings to the game. I was recruited to Michigan, and he was just an upbeat person, an upbeat personality. But, like, what he brings to the game of football, like, you have to go ahead and admire who he is and understand, like, hey, just so y'all know, like, if you're a real football geek, not everybody's going to think you're, like, cool like that. You're going to be invested in the game at all times, and it's going to take it to another level. Playing with Justin Herbert would be pretty cool, huh? That arm? Oh, Ooh. most definitely. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Are you an L.A. guy? Because I heard recently that you said uh, that football on the East Coast might be a little bit better. What are you trying to say, Brendan? Whoa, 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 whoa. When did I ever say that? Oh, I don't know. That's what my producer told me. I think that that's true. I don't know. Sorry? <sighs> They're telling I'm Keyshawn's podcast. I never said that. He never said that. Fake news. Didn't, I, I, didn't happen. I would like to go ahead and see that one. Okay, that I didn't said happen. I made a mistake. West Coast football is the best coast football. West Coast. Okay, so now we're doing the opposite. I think that's what you should do. You should say everything's about, I love the Midwest. That's what you should say on your next interview. The best place Most to play definitely. football is in, you know, in the Midwest with Caleb and everybody and company in Chicago, hopefully. Um, okay, well, this was absolutely amazing to get to meet you. Uh, and you're going to be an absolute star. Is there anything that you want people out there that might see this to, to like, is there something that we aren't talking about about your game? I feel like I uh, hyped you up, but like, what, am I missing something? <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I think you really took it to another level for me, and I'm thankful <laughs> for that. That's right. Sorry, I just pretended to make up something about you liking the, the I, I, I was going to ask you about the Panthers and trying to play with Bryce. Oh, Panthers would be amazing. I mean, sure, to play with Bryce. And then I, the coaching staff, they're like, one of the coaches are family friends of mine, so it would just be amazing. Plus, Who's, another coach. Who is that? Who's the family friend? Moore. Okay. Coach Moore. And then uh, you also have somebody that came over from USC that's on the Panthers staff, as is right now. So, yeah. When you, hey. you had a meeting with them, right? I already did. Was, was Mr. Tepper in that meeting? Excuse me, one more time? Was Mr. Tepper the owner in that meeting? <laughs> You don't know? I'm not going to say. Okay, I'm curious. Oh, I'm not going to say that You're one. You're not going to say. So that's a, that's a yes, but, but, but okay, we love that. Um, but, but you know the receivers coach. I did, I did not connect. Usually I connect those things. I did not know that. Um, that'd be beautiful to see. I was just visiting um, with them, and, and I got to sit with Coach Dave and Mr. Tepper, and I was just blown away. Um, I didn't know Dave Canales before then, and, and I got it when I sat with him, um, what his vibes are. Intense. He's an intense, direct guy. Sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> <Brendan> <laughs> you gotta Pete. love it though. Yeah, you gotta love it wherever you wherever you play. Brendan, with the shout outs to his family, no more goat emojis. Look, I learned something. Brendan Rice, uh, good luck and enjoy every moment. Thank you, I appreciate it. Wonderful interview, wonderful to meet you. Can't wait to see where you end up. We'll be back, of course, on the show. Do not go anywhere. Next week, we got Bo Nix joining the show, Drake May joining the show. But this is not about the quarterbacks, it's about the O-line. We got Duke Many Weather, O-line mastermind on the show. He's tremendous. Um... Tremendous. The goat thing is great. A great cut up for Jordan to end the week. Okay. Did you guys repost that for the Caitlin?
Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that he knows him? Yeah. What would be interesting to ask? Okay. Um, um, um. Okay, okay, okay. What's up? A little uh, nugget for you. You mentioned uh, Rob Moore, the Panthers receivers yeah. coach. He was the guy, he used to play for the Arizona Cardinals, and they used his footage in Jerry Maguire no, for Rod Tidwell. No, Rod Tidwell, a sun devil. <laughs> I've got ants, Jerry. No, I put that together already. I knew that. I don't know, right. he, I don't know why I didn't know he was in Carolina. I'm a sun yeah, devil, Jerry! <laughs> if there's a movie that I know every line to, it's that one. It's that one. Yeah. Great movie. <laughs> um, there was a lot of connections there. I love that. You know what the best, the best part of that? Mm. And what, you know, like you always think like, what does pedigree matter? Like, what does it matter mm. that you have, um, that you have the, um, Marvin Harrison, like that you have the, in, or, or Brendan, and it is the knowing not to say, yeah, Tepper was in the meeting, knowing that that's a yeah, thing people. That's true. <laughs> how many prospects, and it's not their bad, it's not their deal, yeah. how many prospects yeah. know to not even go there because it's going to be. It's taken. true. And he, and, but that's, that's true. but that's, that's the, that's the advantage, in my opinion, that's the advantage. In the oh, that's a great point. Like, he knows, he knows, he just knows more. It's just, it's just true. And that's, that's, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Joining us now, the authority, a guru, if you will, a maestro, a savant on training and preparing offensive linemen for the NFL draft from, um, OL Masterminds. He is the mind of OL Mastermind. It's Big Duke. Conrad, a company's best friend, Duke Manyweather, is here. Hey, Duke. <laughs> hey, Kay. How we doing? Good. It's good to see you. Listen, we're talking quarterbacks, like these running backs, these wide receivers, whatever. This is, you don't do squat if you don't have it figured out in the trenches. So I'm excited to talk to you about this, especially in this draft, because yeah. you're the guy when it comes to prepping them, training the offensive linemen, getting them set uh, for the process uh, until they get drafted. There's a lot of trainers out there, a lot of places to go. A lot. What sets yours apart? Really what sets us apart now at O-Line Masterminds um, in conjunction with Sports Academy at the Star is that we took a holistic approach from the ground up with getting these guys in um, and prepared. And what we call our program isn't so much pre-draft training. We call it rookie transition mm. um, because what we really do is we start um, not assuming anything. So these guys come from all different kinds of programs and we bring them in really to the fold and kind of teach them how to be professionals. Um, our program isn't easy. It's all day. Um, our first group starts at 6 a.m. and these guys are doing something every 90 minutes. But hmm. um, we attacked mind, body and craft in terms of the preparation. So we've got, of course, our strength and conditioning component. And then we've got the speed and agility component for the combine training. And then we've got the mental part where we're watching film and X's and O's. And it all starts with the film, really. Because what we are trying to do is uh, really check the box of the evaluation period with them realizing their potential. But then we also want to make them better offensive linemen. So the way we do that are those three facets, um, mind, body, and craft. And again, um, it's an all-in program. Um, it's at the bare minimum eight weeks and guys are committed um, they understand that on the other side of the hard work um, is everything that they've dreamed, dreamed about. And it, it starts with the preparation. I mean, it sounds like training for the U.S. Marines or something uh, <laughs> in every way. We I still gotta, have fun. I got to ask you, when, I'm, when I go there, let's say I'm a big boy, I'm an offensive lineman, I, or I come visit and I say, I say, Duke, put me through it. What part yeah. am I crying at? Where am I, where, where in the process of those 90, where, what is the toughest drill, toughest moment, mind, body, soul for me? To be honest with you, 
most people's first day, first shock is our dynamic warm up. A lot of guys, when they get the warm up, is what stuns people the most. Um, and what the warm up allows us to do is kind of not only does it get guys warmed up and prepared and prep, we like to say motion is lotion when it comes to any type of O line movements or weight room movements. But what ends up happening is it allows us to have a daily kind of checklist and a daily evaluation to see how these guys are moving. So I have a plan every single day in terms of what we want to get accomplished for the weight room, what we want to get accomplished um, for, you know, the field work. But if a guy isn't moving efficiently, if a guy looks a little tight mm -hmm. and um, doesn't have the mobility and stability, then we need to scrap that, go to uh, more functional mobility, more corrective exercise. So um, our dynamic warm up is, is, is tough. And I think a lot of people that first day, it sends them through a world of shock. Wow. I can't imagine the food. You're smiling. <laughs> I can't imagine the food budget at a program like this. Uh, and yeah. I would like to know yeah. what are the calories consumed in a single day? I know everybody's different, has different goals, losing, gaining, but <laughs> given the intensity, what is, what? I mean, that's a pretty penny for you with that, uh, that food bill, I bet. Yeah, absolutely. When that comes through, uh, our registered di uh, dietitian, Lindsay, does a great job with our performance nutrition and supplementation. Um, but it's costing probably a thousand dollars a week for these guys to eat. <laughs> we try to make sure, like we've got a company, um, it's called Prep Kitchen, but um, we try to make sure uh, that they're getting high quality sources. So depending on what the what the goal is, if guys are maintaining and maintenance, we start actually with um, we do a DEXA scan and a resting metabolic rate. Wow. Um, that way, we kind of know. Uh, what guys are burning and kind of what their composition is. And we look at goal weights. So based upon that, uh, Lindsay and myself and the player comes up with a fuel plan to make sure that they're at their leanest and optimal state. So we've seen guys that are around 4,500 calories. And then we've seen guys that are around 6,500 calories. It really depends on so where they're at. Um, it is. We've even had a guy that is close to 7,000 calories because he burns so much. Um, and again, we look at even when you have guys that need to lose weight and guys that gain weight um, in terms of, you know, caloric dense foods for those hard gainers and then maybe more fats and frequent yeah. meals for those guys that are it's hard to lose. You work with the top guys. You've worked with eight of the top 22 prospects in this 2022, 2024 NFL draft, which is amazing. Um, you've you know scouted a ton more uh, even mm -hmm. than that. Paint the picture, you know, and, and talk to me about some of these guys um, that you've worked with, of course. Uh, and, and I know that you have a relationship with Joe Alt. You know him. I sort of yep. want to ask you about him. Um, you know, everybody's saying he's the top offensive lineman on draft boards. Outside of, you know, what can you say about him? He's gaining comparisons. Like Hamilton was just texting me during the break to Jonathan Ogden, Orlando Pace. Like that's, that's, that's generational, Duke. Yeah, you know what? I talked to a GM last night, and we were both in agreement. When it comes to Joe, um, there isn't much of a projection that needs to be done. You know exactly what he's going to be. Um, okay. He's so efficient with his movement. He's a dynamic run blocker, um, and then is very skilled and craftful um, in terms of his pass protection. So you kind of just see him as a guy that will plug in immediately um, and start to come into his own. And I still think that his best football is, is ahead of him. Um, but the projection, you're not projecting what he could be. And, uh, you know, he's not just potential that hasn't gone uh, unrealized. You know exactly what you're getting when you draft Joe off. Well, you're the authority on offensive linemen, so I thought we could have a little fun and play a little rapid-fire game. We're going to call it Line Him Up. I'm going to give you a trait All right. or an attribute, and you tell me which offensive lineman in the draft best fits this, okay? Okay. Um, best pass protection. Oh, okay, best pass protector. Actually, one of my guys, I think Olu Fashanu out of Penn State is probably the best pass protector in the draft. But then Joe Ald is also a really, really good pass protector as well. Um, but those two guys probably the best pass protectors. Best run blocker. Best run blocker. Ooh, I would have to go with Fuaga out of Oregon State. And then one of my guys, Zach Frazier. I think Zach Frazier had around 147 uh, knockdown blocks. So, uh, you know, I think Zach Frazier is one of those guys. He can make every block from the center position, and he's just a brick house. I mean, you look at him and what he did uh, in his wrestling background, he's pretty special. Most likely to lead the NFL in pancakes. Ooh, again, I think maybe Zach Frazier. Nice. I think Zach Frazier is one of those guys. Potential steal of the draft. 
Oh, there's a lot of really small school guys that I think could be a still at the draft. I think uh, Mason McCormick out of South Dakota State um, is a guy that could be a still at the draft. Um, what about who has the skill? Who can catch a touchdown pass? Based upon one I've seen, I would have to go maybe Jackson Power Johnson. He seems pretty athletic. He's played up and down the field. I think that Jackson Power Johnson would probably be a guy that could catch a touchdown. He's amazing. Got him on our show. Met him. Can't wait to see that. What is the one yeah. trait that you would say, if you're speaking to this group of prospects, the one trait that you've seen through the years, not not even physically, up here, that makes you a great, like, puts you in line to be Jason Kelsey someday? What is that? The mental resilience. It's uh, We hear so much about mental toughness and what that means. And um, really, the mental toughness and the resilience and the grit um, is being able to do the small things and the large things consistently, even when situations aren't ideal. And I think that the guys that make it and really excel, they've got it right here in that regard. The grit, the control, um, the story that they tell themselves is really that mental makeup is what makes the difference with the guys that make it and really excel and realize their potential. We have like a minute left, but I got to ask you about this. Recently retired right. Jason Kelsey. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah a, a guy you know, Cam Jurgens, taken over his yep. spot. Cam said this week he's not trying to replace Kelsey, just trying to be his best. He's moving from guard to center. How difficult is that change and what gives you confidence he can do it? Well, what really gives me confidence that Cam can do that is that he was an exceptional center um, at Nebraska. The only thing here is that is he was drafted by a hall, uh, team that had a Hall of Fame center. Um, so I think that this OTAs and even training camp, it's really just going to be like riding a bike for Cam to uh, integrate wow. back in to the center uh, position. And Cam is 100% right. He's not trying to replace Jason Kelsey. All right. It's not so much about fitting into those shoes. It's about adding in. In, in the mold that you can can bring. So Cam is still going to be bring some of that tough grittiness. He's really good on the move. Okay. I can remember a play versus Oklahoma where he was able to get out in space and finish a guy 20 yards down the field. So those traits and some there's some similarities there between him and Jason Kelsey. Can he so keep I'm the push him. push alive? I think he can. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I, I wanted to know. Hey, I'm so excited for you. This must be so Absolutely. fun to watch the fruit of your labor uh, sort of start their next level. Congrats on everything, and, and thank you for everything that you do for these young players, guys. OL Masterminds, Duke Manyweather is the man. We appreciate you. We'll see you down at Masterminds this summer. See, yeah, okay, I'm going to throw up in that drill. Bye. I'm not trying to be a Green Beret, Duke. <laughs>